As you could tell in the previous videos that I've uploaded, I love playing with Herald of Perfection. It's the only ritual deck that I've really liked because the investment is worth it. Um, I even did a video a couple of days ago you could check out. Actually, I think it might have been a couple of weeks ago. Who knows? Uh, anyway, the link's in the corner. But other than Necros, which has been slammed into oblivion on the ban list, there really hasn't been any other ritual decks that I've considered. There's one that's been shoved into my face repeatedly, though, whenever I'm testing my decks on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, and that is Blue Eyes, and specifically the one with Chaos Max. This deck is kind of cool because it can out to KU, but the players usually use their entire hand to kill the opponent. What's up with that? Um, but what if I told you that you can kill your opponent with basically two to three cards you don't have to use that many cards um one of them is a one card combo and and you could still kill your opponent pretty easily no matter what they have on their field as long as you know they don't have interrupts or anything like that and so just like gail dagra solved my problems with heralder for perfection i i don't understand why people don't run gail dagra in this deck it's an easy three of and all you have to do is add some herald of arc lights into your extra deck um and it's wild because nobody plays it Paying 6k to get a Chaos Max and an AR8 to the field and then OTK your opponent if they have a zero defense monster? That's crazy. And all you need is, you can do it very consistently, uh, all you need is a small Nightmare package. All you need is a Gale Dagra, a way to get any monster on the field, like Alternative, Reborn, Silver Scry, Return of the Dragon Lord, Panker Trops, you know, anything. And a any card to discard. Doesn't matter what it is. So it's very loose what you need. And this is if you want to do it with the Nightmares. Obviously, if your opponent has some scapegoats, just drop the Dagra, pay six, bring out the uh, 4K beater and just kill him. Um, so basically what you do is you summon the Dagra, pay 6,000, get ARA Chaos Max. You summon the second monster, right? So now you have Gale Dagra and the other monster. Uh, you link Dagra and the second monster away into any Link 2 Nightmare. It could be Phoenix or... Uh, or Cerberus. Usually, usually I like to do Phoenix just in case my opponent has some back row. Um, you can get rid of it now. That means you have to discard another card, but that's cool. Uh, you link it away. Once you summon it, you link that link to away into a mermaid, and you pitch that random card we were talking about to summon Ibli. After that, you can just link summon the Ibli and the mermaid into any other link to. It doesn't matter what, what it is. And then you can actually give the Ibli to your opponent's side of the field in defense mode. Now, because you have the ARA and the uh, Chaos Max in your hand, uh, you could just play the ARA and drop the Chaos Max and you run over the Ibli. And that's it. Note that if you're going to use a Reborn card like Monster Reborn or Silver's Cry or Return of the Dragon Lords, uh, you have to s drop the Chaos Max first because you got to send the monster to the graveyard. Uh, once you do that, then you can go ahead and do your uh, whole thing because you won't have anything to uh, link summon with Gale Dog, right? You need something in the graveyard that you can reborn, and the advanced ritual art is going to send the uh, the monster to the graveyard before uh, you can start your link shenanigans. This makes me think that Gale Dagra is not only the new Cyber Sign, it's a better version of Cyber Sign. Being able to one shot your opponent. And not have to run a brick like Megamorph, that's great because all you need is Gale Dagra and a small Nightmare package. That's it. It doesn't mess up with your. The only thing it messes with is your extra deck. And not and Blue Eyes, I don't think runs a really big extra deck. They run really like you know Cherries targets or uh, you know things like that or uh, like a few rank gates. Other than that though, they really don't run anything crazy. Uh, one thing I will admit is Gale Dagra is a juicy Ash Failure Ogre Impermanence target. Um, you're probably going to be able to catch your opponent by surprise the first game, but you're really going to have to do other plays after that. Uh, the good thing is the the Blue Eyes deck does some other things, um, but the best thing to do is because the Blue Eyes deck has so many search cards, uh, you want to use things you know like trade in cards of consonants melody that kind of thing and you want to hopefully bait out your opponent's ash you know um the other stuff like uh, i mean obviously you're going to be running um called by the grave but the other stuff like ghost ogre effect veiler and permanence that kind of stuff that kind of stuff's a little dicey it's going to be a little bit harder to uh to get rid of that but you know usually if you keep your wits on you you could even run things like midbreaker field um as long as you can try to bait out your opponent's cards um then you can just go proceed and otk them 
Uh, and obviously, you know, for back row, you can run Hate True, Nade, Red, Reboot, that kind of thing. Yell Dogger also helps the deck go first because you know they're not going to let you go second. They're going to want you to go first because you're going first play is going to be kind of eh. Um, because it's a one card combo, you can splash other level eight rituals, uh, other than chaos max, and you don't have to run that many chaos max when you do this. So instead of running three chaos max, you can run one because Gale Dogger searches it. Um, one of the ones that I was looking at was Lord of the Red. Um, I was like, this card isn't that good, but when I read it, uh, I was kind of surprised. And this is what it reads once per turn during either player's turn, when a Carter effect is activated, except Lord of the Red, you can target a monster on the field, destroy it. Once per turn during either player's turn, when a card or effect is activated, except Lord of the Red, you can target a spell and trap on the field, destroy it. So what it does is it pops two cards, one back row, one monster, uh, every time an effect is activated. But you can only do it once per turn. So up to twice per turn, you can pop two cards. So it's kind of like a uh, like a ghost ogre if it's if you're like chaining to a monster effect. Um, it's neat because that means your opponent has to like work around his effect, which is kind of annoying. But the cool thing, too, is you can trigger it yourself. Um, if you have cards like Call by the Grave, any hand traps, anything like that, whenever you activate them, you can chain his effect and pop something. So you can catch your opponent off guard. If he activated something, you can chain something. Um, so, like, let's say he dropped a Brilliant Fusion, and then you did, like, I don't know, you activated Ash Blossom. Uh, then your opponent chained... Uh, called by the grave then you could chain this guy and pop the brilliant fusion so you go you get those little combinations there and then obviously whenever you, if you draw him going second and then you for whatever reason they got rid of your chaos max or he got discarded with gumblar or what, what have you you can use him to start clearing out the field to you know not one shot your opponent but to make sure that you can still push for game with your other big beaters. I mean, it is Blue Eyes after all, isn't it? Another card that I was testing out was too was Amor Factor Pain, the Imagination Drake Overlord. And this card is amazing. It reads, If this card is Ritual Summoned, your opponent skips their next main phase one. Negate the effects of face-up Fusion Synchro Xyz while they are on the field. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add one Drake Overlord monster from your deck to your hand. Except Amor Factor Pain, the Imagination Drake Overlord. This card is a little wild because, uh, well, l let me start with the first. Let me just, let me start with the first part. Um, if you know you're going against a deck who plays Xyz, you know, like Mermail or Fusion, like Thunder Dragon, that's a really popular deck right now, or Invoked um, uh, or Synchro, kind of like Zombies, you know, that's a, that's one that is always up there. Um, you're able to stun your opponent and, for, and force them to get rid of it. Uh, because if they don't get rid of it, uh, none of their extra deck cards are going to really work. Kind of. Um, obviously, the bad part about this monster is it doesn't take care of Link monsters, which is probably the most popular mechanic out there. Um, and it sucks because as of recording this video, uh, the most popular deck right now is Danger Dark World FTK. And this card does absolutely nothing to them. Even, I mean, they can summon Cerberus and pop it. <laughs> that's how that's how kind of weak that part is. Um, to be honest with you, I tend to use the first effect more. Uh, that effect that skips your opponent's main phase one, it doesn't sound like anything special. But if you're going first and you drop him, you have a Yale Dog around the field. So uh, your opponent can't attack you. Your opponent draws, goes to the standby phase, skips the main phase one, goes straight into battle phase. But they didn't, they didn't summon anything, so there's not much they could do in their battle phase, so they just go straight to main phase 2. That's really good, because that gives you another turn, so that if you need to do more plays... Yeah, one of the biggest problems with cards like, you know, Gale Dagra, is your opponent could just drop a monster and just kill you with it if it has 2650 attack or more. So, just keeping the main phase 1 is pretty important. So yeah, if you're a Chaos Max player, I think, I think you can afford to put three Dagras and two Herald of the Arc Light into your deck. Um, it's a better way of summoning Chaos Max. Um, if you wanted to, you could run Megamorph, <laughs> pump him up to 8K, equip it, and then it just has to run over something that's 4,000 defense or less, which sounds ridiculous. But yeah, that's basically what it becomes to. Um, I wouldn't do that. I would just do the Nightmares because they're useful by themselves. And uh, obviously it makes it so you don't have to draw as many dead cards. It's just, you know... It basically makes a Gale Dagra and then just some cards that you already run in your deck anyway. 
the worst comes to worst, you could just, you know, send it to the graveyard with Sage and just turn it into a blue eye. So, you know, it's not that bad. See you later.